اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> you heard that the topic of my speech today is the passion in the heart of the promised sail islam for the supremacy of Islam. We find that all religions contain prophecies concerning the advent of the Messiah in the latter days, be it the, the Hindus, Christians, Jewish, Sikhs, Buddhists, or indeed Muslims. With this in mind, the question remains that if the advent of the messengers had ceased, how could all these people agree on one single fact, that the promised one of the latter days is yet to appear. The Muslim Ummah have been blessed with the Holy Quran's guidance from Allah the Almighty. In chapter 62, verse 3 and 4, Allah gives us the glad tidings of the arrival of the promised Messiah, He it is who has raised among the unlettered people a messenger from amongst themselves, who recites unto them his signs, and purifies them, and teaches them the book and wisdom, though before they were in manifest error. And he will raise him amongst others of them who have not yet joined them. He is the mighty, the wise. The promised Messiah was Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad He was born in 1835 in Khadiyan, a small village situated in the district of Punjab in India. He was born to a noble land-owning family of Khadiyan. As he belonged to a <clears throat> well-to-do family, tutors were arranged for his education. They taught him to read the Holy Quran and gave him elementary education in Arabic, Persian, logic, philosophy, and grammar. However, his knowledge and his wisdom was set to spread in the four corners of the earth. The Prophet Sallallahu said that now the need is to use the pen and not the sword. It was time to use his writing prowess in the arena of science and demonstrate the miracle of Islamic spiritual valor. He said how is, it could not be possible to do so without the grace of Allah, who wanted his faith defended by the promised Messiah. As a Messiah Ma'ad al-Islam published 91 books through his lifetime in Urdu, Arabic, Persian, and also established the Re Review of Religion and Al-Hakam magazine. His magnus opus was Brahine Ahmadiyya, this series of books elaborate upon the divine origin of the Holy Quran and the truthfulness of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The promised Messiah Islam was driven by his love for the promised, uh, the, for the love of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The promised Messiah would always encourage his followers to send salutations upon the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would send most of his days sending the rood upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so much so that he experienced the falling dream. I recall that one night I was so occupied with calling down blessing of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that my heart and soul became fragrant therein, therewith. The same night I saw in my dream that people were carrying into my house water skins filled with the divine light in the form of water. And one of them said, they, they, these are the blessings which you have sent on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The flow of revelation and visions continued gathering momentum until in 1882 he received the revelation which made manifest God's design that he, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, was to be the appointed one the one commissioned by Allah to serve his cause, and part of the revelation received in 1982 was as follows. 
O Ahmed, God has blessed thee. Say, I am commanded to guide the world to the path of righteousness, and I am the first to believe. Help shall come to thee from men whose hearts Allah has himself prepared through revelation. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, set out various objectives when establishing the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And he said, the mission for which I have been appointed is to remove the growing gap in the relationship between God and his creation and replace it once again with the relationship of love and sincerity and by allowing the truth to manifest itself and cause religious wars and discord to end, thus lay the foundation for peace. Western philosophy and science, although progressive and groundbreaking, could not quench the spiritual thirst of the Western nations. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prophesied that one of the signs of the last hour is that the sun will rise from the west. One interpretation mentioned by the Prophet is that the spiritual sun of Islam will rise from the west, which means Western nations will accept the religion of Islam. The Eastern nations which have inherited this religion with the passage of time forgot and did not fully appreciate this blessing, yet the Western nations are thirsty of such guidance. The Prophet Islam, interpreting the prophecy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam writes, I saw myself standing on a rostrum in London, revealing the truth of Islam through well-reasoned arguments in the English language. Afterwards, I caught many birds sitting on a small tree. The color was white and their bodies were like those of partridges. Therefore, I interpret this to mean that even though not me, yet my writings would spread amongst those people and many righteous Englishmen would become prey of the truth. Now God Almighty wants to encompass these people with his divine mercy. This we have witnessed being fulfilled before our very eyes, the presence of Khilafat in the UK, the growth and expansion of the Jamaat across the Western world, all the great promises delivered by Allah the Almighty gathering momentum as we progress into the future. In order to understand how Islam was spread across the West, we must take a little look back in history. During the time of the Prophet the British Empire was dominantly ruling across the Indian subcontinent. It was apparent from their lectures and meetings that the conversion of the entire India to Christianity was their ultimate goal, as they thought to be the only means to confirm the loyalty of its citizens and give further strength to the empire. Sir Charles Wood, the Minister of State for India, declared that the acceptance of the Christian faith was a bond of union with England and an additional source of strength to the empire. This was a time when Christian missionaries were boasting about the supremacy of their faith and predicting the conversion of the entire world to Christianity. Charles Henry Robinson in the history of Christianity, Christian, mis Christian missions after quoting the latest Indian census report stated that substantial amount of these conversions came from Punjab. And Robertson writes, should the increase which has been taking place during the last 30 years be maintained, in 50 years time, the Christians will number one in 21 of the population. And in 100 years time, they will number one in five and in 160 years, the whole population of India will be Christian. The zealous efforts of the Christian mission was to establish to the dire and vulnerable state of Muslim population in India. Their hopelessness only depicted moral and spiritual decline as prophesied by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An Urdu poet and the writer of the 19th century, Altaf Hussain Hali, described the prophecy in one of his couplets. Neither religion nor Islam was left, only the name of Islam was left. 
In these difficult times, the Prophet ﷺ began the defense of Islam. The Prophet's interaction with the Western missionaries began in British India as early as 1860 when he took an appointment under the instruction of his father in Sialkot. Hazrat Mizar Ghulam Ahmad was renowned as a learned Islamic scholar and would often engage in public debates and dialogue with the Christian missionaries, Hindu revivalists, and some Muslim scholars in the defense of the true Islamic teaching. One of the most noted one was the prayer duel between the promised Messiah al-Islam and Dr. Alexander Doi. After Doi made his claim to be the Elijah III, Hazrat Mizar Ghulam Ahmad al-Islam stated in an American journal, if the pretender of Elijah ship shows his willingness by any direct or indirect means to enter the list against me, he shall leave the world before my eyes with great sorrow and torment. Those two signs were for Europe and America. The tragic death of Dr. Dowie from acute paralysis in 1907 proved beyond doubt, beyond doubt the divine hand had intervened in favor of the promised Messiah, al Islam, and Islam. In 1869, Hazur al Islam attended a public discussion with Malvi. Muhammad Hassan Batalvi, a leader of <clears throat> um, uh, or, or, um, or, uh, of Ali Hadith's community. When Hazur al Islam questioned Mr. Batalvi's belief on certain theological points, he discovered his answer was given in accordance with Islamic teaching. So he refused to de debate him further. The person who had brought the promised al-Islam for the discussion was furious and expressed his dismay for this letdown. However, Zuri Akdas maintained, whatever I did was to seek the pleasure of God, the Almighty. I don't care if anyone condemned it. Allah, the Almighty, was so pleased with the following the, with that, that the following prophecy was revealed. God is pleased with your attitude. He will shower his blessings on you, so much so that the kings will seek blessings from your garments. He was emotive in his message and urged the people of the world to turn towards the true message of God. In his book, Kashti Anu, he stated the following. It, Islam, is the fountain of life that will save you. What am I to do? How, am, how shall I impress the hearts with this good news? What sort of drum am I to beat in the streets in order to make the announcement that this is your God, so that the people might hear? In 1872 onwards, the Prophet Sayyid al-Islam emerged as the champion of Islam and setting forth the excellence of his teaching in every sphere. He did this by writing articles for publications in newspaper and journals. It was the publication of Brahine Ahmadiyya part one and two that truly displayed the treasure of knowledge with the God had bestowed upon him. Many Muslim scholars and intellectuals wrote reviews of the book and considered it a great service to Islam. Muhammad, Muhammad Hussain Batalvi wrote the following towards Brahine Ahmadiyya. In our opinion, in light of the state of affairs of this era, this book is such that to this day, a book of such stature has not been written in the history of Islam. And the author of this book, i.e. the Prophet Islam, has proven his devotion to Islam by such help with money, life, pen, tongue, conduct, and writings, the like of which has seldom been found amongst the Muslims. In the third volume of Brahine Ahmadiyya, the Prophet Islam presented himself as the criteria to judge the truthfulness of a living religion, Islam, by asking the seekers to come to Qadian to witness a sign for the truthfulness of Islam. It was the first time that someone had put forward an alternative criteria 
to judge the truthfulness of a religion. Until then, the focus of all faiths had been on rational and narrative reasoning. In 1835, the Prophet Sayyid al-Islam announced that he was the promised reformer of the 14th century. This announcement was published in Urdu and translated into English. 8,000 copies were sent to registered letters to religious leaders, rulers, scholars, judges, and theorists in Asia, Europe, and America, and wherever it was possible to be sent by post. The announcement invited representatives of religion and other prominent members of society to come and witness the truthfulness of Islam at Qadian. If a sign was not witnessed within a year, a sum of 200 rupees per month would be paid as a compensation to such individuals. By the year 1891, 20,000 such leaflets on Islamic truth in English and Urdu had been published or was sent to Europe and America. Just as the Christian missionaries descended in the East, Allah the Almighty had willed that the message of Islam should be propagated in the West through his promised Messiah, thus proving the words of the Holy Quran. And they planned, and Allah also planned, and Allah is the best of planners. In December 1896, the Conference of Great Religion was held in Lahore. The conference was organized by the leaders of the Satnam Dharam faith. The Prophet Sire made the announcement before the conference, which was published widely as the grand piece of news for the seekers of truth. He stated that if the paper which he has written for the conference is not the result of ordinary human effort, but a sign amongst the signs of God written with his special support. God, the all-knowing, has revealed to me that my paper will be declared supreme over all other papers. I received the revelation in Arabic, God is with you and God stands where you stand. The paper went on to be published under the title, The Philosophy of the Teaching of Islam. Since the conference, the paper has received international acclaim and millions have derived knowledge and wisdom from it. Soon the Prophet became, began meeting with various intellectuals and scholars of the time. All intrigued by his claim and teachings, Dr. H. D. Griswold wrote two papers, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the Mahdi, the Messiah of Qadian, and the Messiah of Qadian. After his audience with Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al Islam, although controversial in its nature, it introduced the claim of the Messiah in the Victoria Institute of Philosophy of Great Britain in 1905. This opened up the dialogue regarding Islam and greater curiosity surrounding the man who was inevitably inspiring these debates. Up to this point, Qadian was namely a remote, unknown village in the Indian province of Punjab. At that time, access to Qadian was difficult and only possible by means of mules and horses. In fact, people preferred to walk to Qadian because of the uneven paths. It was this time that Allah the Almighty had informed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through a revelation that he will soon be made well known amongst people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also was informed that many people will come to you that the tracks on which they travel will become deep. Many traveled from within India to Qadian and accepted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were others who traveled from or beyond, belonged to distant lands of Europe and America, who also came to Qadian and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some came seeking the truth and were blessed and went on to accept the Imam of the age. Others came out of curiosity for research purposes. In April 1908, an American couple, Mr. George Turner and Lady Barden, met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Qadian. 
And amongst the various questions asked, then inquired, what evidence do you have for the truthfulness of your claim? The Prophet Islam responded, your arrival here is also a sign for us. For if you knew it, you may have apprehended coming here. For you to come after a distance travel to this small town is also under a prophecy and is a sign and proof of the truthfulness. Among the religious leaders, rulers, scholars, judges, and theorists of Asia, Europe, and America who received the announcements of the Prophet Islam was Alexander Russell Webb, who converted to Islam in 1888. He came across this invitation when he was studying theosophy at that time. He began the correspondence with the Prophet Islam after discovering his invitation in a newspaper, The Scotsman. Webb visited India in October 1892. He reached as close as Lahore before being dissuaded from visiting Mr. Ghulam Ahmad due to his recent claim of a messiahship. Malvi Hassan Ali and Abdullah Arab, the men who accompanied and funded Webb's journey in India, both advised that it would not be wise to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Qadian when the Muslim donations were required for missionary work in America. Webb deeply re regretted this decision when the Islamic mission failed. He continued to correspond with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions such as Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sadiq and asked for prayers. He also forwarded contacts of other Muslims interested in Islam to Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahib. The two individuals who deterred Webb from visiting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam themselves became the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Review of Religion magazine was also initiated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the propagation of Islam in the West. Many letters and reviews were received in Qadian about his content from across the world. One lady wrote to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Manchester, London, on the 25th of May, 1905. I always used to doubt how the true religion can be spread by the sword. There is no doubt that it is permitted only for defense. I am pleased to know that you live under British rule where you have the right of freedom and thought and expression. I have also read about your prophecy which you made 25 years ago. I am delighted to read the virtuous teachings mentioned in the Review of Religion. And I hope that you will be successful in your work for spreading the truth. Although the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had many admirers, he also faced great opposition. One of the most notable was Malvi Ghulam Nabi. He was an influential scholar and, a considerable, and had a considerable following among the Muslim whom he delighted with his scholarly knowledge of the Quran and Hadith. It was during the period of the Prophet's stay in Ludhiana that Maulvi Ghulam Nabi used to bring with him a crowd of people to pitch outside the residence of the Prophet where they proceeded to speak ill of him. One day it so happened that the Prophet Messiah was making his way to his residence and Munshi Ghulam Nabi caught a glimpse of his face and this completely overpowered him. Prior to his occurrence, he was busy delivering his usual speeches. Having seen the radiant face of the Prophet Sallallahu he rushed towards him and seeing him approach, Maulvi Sahib returned his greetings and took hold of his hand and accompanied him inside. Once inside, Maulvi Sahib not only sat close to the Prophet Sallallahu he also began to declare his love and admiration for him. Being a scholar, naturally, he raised many pertinent questions relating to the Prophet's claim about the death of Jesus and about his own commission. The Promised Messiah replied, quoting references from the Holy Quran, 
To which Molly Saab said, certainly the Quran is with you. The Prophet ﷺ responded that if the Quran was on his side, then whose side was Molly Saab on? To this he immediately replied that he sided with the promised Messiah and at this he wished to take oath of the initiation. From that time on, Hazrat Maulvi Gulam Nabi Sahib became totally immersed in the love of the promised Messiah, paying frequent visits to Qadian, wishing never to leave his side. The promised Messiah was able to spread the truthful message of Islam, not just by writing a written word, but through great miracles and acts of kindness. These events also laid testament to the, to the truth of his claim and his supplication to the will of Allah. It was famously narrated that a young adult named Abdul Kareem came to Qadian from Hyderabad. A mad dog happened to bite him. Locally, all forms of treatment were used to try and cure him but to no avail. At last, he was sent to the famous hospital in Kusli. Upon his return, when the signs of his illness began to grow again, the doctors were informed by telegram and advice was sought. The response received by him was, sorry, nothing can be done for Abdul Karim. Upon this, the Prophet Sallallahu very emphatically said, they do not have a cure However, God the Almighty has a cure. Thus, the Prophet sincere, sincerely prayed for the young man, and through Allah's grace and mercy, he made a miraculous recovery and went on to live a healthy life, alhamdulillah. These miracles continued throughout the life of the promised Messiah and long afterwards. They were the testament to his truth and passion towards bringing people back to the guidance of Allah through the message of Islam. A similar faith inspiring incident took place in Western Africa in Benin a few years ago. The wife of a king in Benin became seriously ill. There was no lack of financial resources. Everyone from pos every form of possible treatment was used, but her conditions kept getting worse every moment. At that time, the situation was such that she was breathing her last few breaths and any moment she could have stopped breathing. In the state of help, helpness, helplessness and anxiety, he sat next to his wife's bed in deep sorrow, and all of a sudden, he happened to look at the frame in which there was a piece of the garment of the Promised Messiah, and that reminded him of the revelation of the Promised Messiah that kings will seek blessings from thy garments. The Ahmadi king had firm belief in that heavenly prophecy and took the frame and placed it on the chest of his wife. Then he himself placed a prayer mat in front of him and prostrated to the Almighty God. That living God listens to the prayers of the distressed. And after the king completed his prayer and took up, his wife said that by the grace and blessings of Allah, I am perfectly fine. This is the example of the living God and his manifestations that were presented by Islam. These accounts are just the early stepping stones established by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the true renaissance of Islam. I wish I could have more time. However, due to the so shortage of time, I'm unable to do justice to this subject. When the Prophet Sallallahu started the jihad of the pen in the defense of Islam and the honor of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not put down the weapon of the pen until he took his struggle to the pinnacle. He performed this jihad with such devotion that it completely brings to light his passion for the service of Islam. When speaking of the Prophet Sallallahu the worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mizza Masroor Ahmed Ayyutatala bin Rasul Aziz said, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, has stated that this was the era of the completion of the propagation of the perfect guidance of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thus, Hazur Akhtar stated that the promised Messiah, 
utilizing the printing press to publish books and articles in newspapers to spread the message of the true peaceful teachings of Islam to not just all parts of India, but the rest of the world. In his book, A Message of Our Times, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah be his helper, said, the message of the Promised Sail Islam is a message that should be repeated again and again. Firstly, he, the Promised Sire, was to bring mankind back to its creator and to draw the attention of the people to, towards fulfilling his rights. Secondly, he came to urge humanity to respect human values and to fulfill the rights of all and one another. I would like to end with the words of the Promised Sire, Islam. O oh, merciful God, the propagation of the task for which you have appointed me and for the service which you have created passion in my heart, fulfill it with your grace and complete the argument with the hand of his humble one upon all those who have been unaware of the beauties of Islam to this day. May Allah enable us all to carry forward this desire and the perpetuation to spread the true message of Islam, not just through our efforts in tabligh, but through our prayers and daily actions. Zakallah, Amin.